that, my name is Alistair Baird from the Darkroom in Cheltenham and today I'd like to talk about push and pulling film. So what on earth does push and pulling film mean? Well I guess you could say that if you're talking about pushing a film your intention is to alter the exposure at the time that you're taking the picture with the intention of later making an adjustment to the development to compensate for what you've done in the exposure. So if you took the picture normally, you'd set the camera to uh, with the correct uh, film speed in the camera. Then you took the pictures as advised by the light meter and you took them correctly. Then there's no need to push and pull. Uh, that is normal and you've got quite a bit of latitude as to what normal is. But if, uh, for instance, let's say you put in a 100 air say film, but you'd left the meter that you set on here to 400, then the camera thinks the film is twice as fast as uh, the film is twice as fast as it really is, so it's going to give it less light. So uh, that 100 ASA film has now been given two stops, so that's 400, 200, 100, that's two stops, too little light. So in the nature of film, um, you haven't really got enough of a reaction on the film surface and in the emulsion to get all the tones that you'd want in the final picture. So you can then compensate by extending the development time, which helps um, develop and enlarge the, the, the silver halides and so on in the film in the development process. Now, if you're developing, say, a black and white film at home, then you could look, look up on the chart to see how much extra time you might need to give your film to develop it. If you're sending, say, a transparency film to a laboratory, then you need to give those instructions nice and clearly as to whether the film is to be pushed, uh, which is more likely, or pulled, which is only occasionally asked for. And there are easy terms to get wrong, and if you do the wrong adjustment, it's going to make a bad situation an awful lot worse. So really the simplest thing from, from us, from a laboratory's point of view, is to just write down what speed you've exposed the film at, which you've picked up because maybe you set this inadvertently, or maybe you know you did it intentionally because you were in a really dark situation and you had no choice but to slightly underexpose. But write it down. Write down, um, I exposed this at 400 ASA, or even you know give us the details, I exposed this at 30th of a second at F22 and I should have done this. And then we've got, we've got more of a chance of working out what is the correct push or pull development to give that film to give you good results. Um, so that's it in a nutshell. Um, if you need to know what a stop is, because you talk about push one stop or pull one stop or two stop, three stops, um, then that's a kind of slightly different subject would take too much time. But I mentioned about uh, results from laboratory and typically transparency film is one way you need to ask the lab to make an adjustment. So let's have a look at some slides I've put together to show you what two stops underexposed actually looks like. Um, so we'll have a look at those and see if you can then see exactly why you're asking to have the film pushed or pulled. So let's go to those slides now. Here's a setup of products from our store and we chose these because there's a good range of tones, highlights, black, a mix of colours and a neutral background. We used a 120 camera with Fuji Provia transparency film and we've intentionally shot a roll of film, two stops underexposed, a stop underexposed, normal exposure and one stop overexposed. And here are the slices of the results of those exposures and at the bottom they're annotated left to right so the exposure sequence is two stops underexposed, a stop underexposed normal and a stop overexposed. Now all of these were then developed normally so what you can see here are the results of just that underexposure and on the minus two stops you can see here that the particularly the white areas that looks kind of muddy the shadows are really very dark it's difficult to see any detail in there compare that to the overexposed one on the right hand side and you can see the highlights have really become quite washed out and you've lost detail in the highlight areas and that's quite important so there you are, there's a kind of direct comparison. This is what to expect from two stops underexposed, a stop overexposed.
To compensate for those incorrect exposures, we now need to adjust the development. So at the top, here are the instructions you'd give to the laboratory. So on the far left, there's push two stops, then push one, that's just normal, and then pull minus one stop. Now here's the results of those bits of film after the process been adjusted to compensate for the under and over exposure. And on first glance, everything looks great because the densities generally match up. But if you look in a bit more detail, you can see quite a lot of change between these different frames. The one that's been pulled a stop looks kind of flat. The colours are a bit muddy. And I can tell you from years of experience that pulling film is very much a last resort because the, the overall impact is never great. Now, if we have a look at the frame that's been pushed to stops in development, you can see it's picked up quite a lot of extra contrast. Now, you might like that kind of punchy look to the film, but there is a downside, and that's that you're going to lose detail in the highlights and in the shadows because any extra development will always increase contrast. In this final frame, what I've done is to zoom in on the left-hand side. That's the strip of film that's been pushed two stops. And on the right here, that's been normally developed. And I've done this to illustrate this difference in contrast. And although it's subtle, if you look at the black top to that bottle, you can see the one on the left is pretty much inky black. There's only a tiny little highlight here compared to the normal development where you can still see the the sort of knurled edge. Um, but you can see by comparison there, there's a bit more detail in the normal uh, developed film. And also in these highlights, the one on the left, this area at the top of the bottle, that is completely washed out. There is absolutely no detail in there. And it then at this edge here, it just drops to the next tone. There's no kind of graduation between it. Whereas on the normal development here, well, you've just got enough tone to work with. So. That's a good illustration of how that contrast is affected by it being pushed to stop. And if we just pull back again, here's those four slices we looked at a few moments ago. And you've got a side by side comparison, the effect of those different processes on the final result. So I hope now that you've seen those illustrations, you've got a clearer idea as to what all this pushing and pulling is, and indeed, if you even need it. Um, do bear in mind that Film manufacturers intend their film to get the best results from the film when it's processed and exposed normally. Um, however, as you've seen, uh, if things go wrong, you can make that uh, process adjustment. Now, I've looked at transparency film because it was simply easier to illustrate with transparency. Next time around, um, I'd like to look at colour and black and white negative. But whatever you're doing, if you need a process adjustment made, at a laboratory such as ourselves, then why not make your life and theirs that much easier and less open to misinterpretation by actually writing on the roll of film what the adjustment should be and that way it's not going to come separated from it. Okay, uh, that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. Um, enjoy your photography, pushed, pulled or otherwise and I look forward to seeing you next time. Okay, bye bye.